Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the best powered speakers over $1,000 and help you understand what sets them apart. Powered speakers have been prevalent in the professional audio world for decades. The pros who depend on total accuracy and sound know that powered speakers offer a lot of advantages when done right. In the last few years, powered speakers have become really popular in the home market. They offer the advantage of eliminating a lot of components previously needed for a great sound system, and they combine all the features right into the speakers. Now, there are a host of options under $1,000 that are perfect for computer or desktop systems. If you're looking for those, check out our video linked in the description on the best computer speakers. This video is going to focus on high-performance powered speakers that rival traditional hi-fi systems. I'm going to walk you through these in order of price. So as I go through the video, I will talk you through the major connections and capabilities of each speaker system. It's a lot to remember, so we have created a full chart at our written review at audioadvice.com where you can go see all the details together. So let's start with Klipsch the Sevens. The Sevens have one inch titanium tweeters with Tractix horns combined with a six and a half inch woofer. Like most powered speaker systems, the right speaker has all of the electronics in it, including all of the inputs and the amplifiers. Connections include Bluetooth, HDMI, ARC, optical, USB, and analog RCA inputs, and a 3.5 millimeter jack. The secondary speaker is connected to the primary via a proprietary four conductor cable that Klipsch includes along with an extension cable. I want to point out one key thing here to help you understand high performance powered speakers versus less expensive systems. One major advantage of powered speakers is the ability for designers to use active electronic crossovers so that each driver in each speaker receives only the exact frequencies matched up to that driver. However, to do this, you need an amplifier for each driver. So in all of the high performance powered speakers in this video, you will either have at least a four conductor wire going from the primary speaker to the secondary like you do in these, or both speakers will get plugged into the wall and have multiple amplifiers in each speaker, which you will see in some of the other speakers in this video. Okay, back to the clips of the sevens. Like the rest of the speakers in this video, you can flip a switch on the back of the speakers to choose which is the primary speaker in case anything you happen to connect is closer to one of the speakers than the other. The sevens take audio performance to high res audio with 24 bit 192K resolution. That makes the Klipsch 7 stand apart as they're generally considered soundbar killers, meaning they can play way deeper and better than almost any soundbar and are easily controlled by a television via their HDMI art connection. We tested the 7s against the Klipsch Cinema Soundbar 600, which also features HDMI art, and there was no question the 7s were far more powerful and provided a significantly larger soundstage. The 7s use Bluetooth for wireless playback and do not have Chromecast or Apple AirPlay so if your preferred method of playing music is to stream via Chromecast or AirPlay 2, these are probably not going to be your best bet. If you will primarily use HDMI and or Bluetooth, then the 7s are a fabulous option. They come in both black and walnut finishes and aesthetically they match the Klipsch Heritage Series look. If you like the looks of these speakers and they have all the functionality you are looking for but you want more output, the 9s are a step up with an 8 inch woofer for more bass output. At the time of this video, the 7s go for about $1,299 and the 9s for $1,499. If you really want to rock your room, you can also add an additional subwoofer to either of these. When you plug in the subwoofer, it automatically engages a 60 hertz crossover so that the deep bass goes to the subwoofer while the rest of the frequencies play in the powered speakers. I tested these with a matching subwoofer that we carry at Audio Advice and it works super well. One other really cool thing about the 7s and the 9s is they actually have a phono input, meaning if you get a turntable, you don't need a phono amplifier to play straight through these speakers. Now, if you want to learn more about the 7s and the 9s, be sure to check out our full overview and comparison linked in the description. Okay, the next option are for those of you who really enjoy high performance audio. If you've got a big enough budget or really value great audio, JBL makes two great powered speaker options, the 4305P and its larger brother, the 4329P. 
like the 7s and the 9s from Klipsch, the 4305P and the 4329P use the same inputs and electronics as each other, but the 4329P is larger with bigger amplifiers and drivers. The 4305P uses the great 2410H compression driver coupled with their high definition imaging horn in their 5 and a quarter inch pure pulp black paper cone woofer with a cast frame. The 4329P steps up to the patented JBL 2409H 1 inch compression driver and moves up to a larger 8 inch woofer. Before I go any further, it's super important to understand the level of components JBL has included in these speakers. These drivers and associated amplifiers are derived from extensive research at the famous Harman Northridge facility. Their studio monitors, which these speakers are based on, are used by audio engineers all around the world. Just know that their compression drivers are world class and every component in these speakers is built to meet the standards of the best studios and audiophiles alike. These speakers use audiophile grade DACs with 24-bit 192K resolution. So now let's talk about the inputs on these. First, they have a pair of pro-level balance XLR inputs and quarter-inch phono plugs. In addition, you get a 3.5 millimeter analog input, a Toslink digital input, a asynchronous USB input for use with computer audio. And these have Bluetooth 5.1, which enables great resolution with lower latency and longer distances than prior versions. In addition to the Bluetooth, the JBLs add lossless CD quality or higher resolution music that can be played over your network using Apple AirPlay 2 or Google Chromecast from your phone, iPad, or computer. This is way simpler than you might think, allowing you to easily stream music to these speakers or to even multiple sets of speakers around your house with just a couple of button clicks. I've made a setup guide that we send to all purchasers showing you how to easily set up your powered speakers and how to easily stream to them. Trust me that it's way easier and more fun than you might imagine if you've not done it. You also get a nice little remote and you can access inputs and volume right from the front of the primary speaker. As you step up to the JBL powered speakers, you pick up a few key things. First, the speakers can be paired to each other wirelessly, allowing you to set them pretty much anywhere in a room without having to deal with a wire connecting them. Each speaker has its own electrical plug, so they each hold their own active crossover and amplifiers that we talked about earlier, but without requiring a wire. However, you can connect them using the included Ethernet cable to step up the resolution from 24-bit 96K to 24-bit 192K. I've tested them both ways, and for the vast majority of content, including full CD quality, you don't need a wire. If you're a total audiophile and are playing ultra-high-res music from Cobuzz or somewhere else, use the Ethernet cable to connect them. I also tested both of these JBL powered speakers in my exercise room connected to a Peloton. The 5.1 Bluetooth connection has very low latency so you can easily use these speakers to totally crank up the Peloton experience as if you were in their New York studio. I was so impressed with the 4329Ps in my exercise room that I called JBL to get a pair for that room for myself. To that end, unlike the Klipsch's, you can control the entire volume range of these speakers using Bluetooth from your phone, Peloton, or other device without touching the speakers. Both of the JBLs have subwoofer outs that engage an 80 Hz crossover when you plug in a powered sub. Although I will tell you that these speakers have enormous slam. Most people won't need a sub on either one, but if you step up to the 43 29 piece with the 8 inch subwoofer and dual front ports, you will be shocked at how much bass and slam they have going all the way down to 28 hertz at 6 dB down. These speakers measure incredibly well with flat frequency response across the spectrum, producing sweet neutral sounds with massive power that is totally controlled. We have matching speaker stands for each of the speakers in this video that you can find at audiovice.com. The larger 4329Ps use a special stand that is low to the floor, but angles them perfectly for ear level listening either in a chair or working out. So now that I've told you how great these are, let's talk about the downside. Neither model offers an HDMI connection, so if your primary use of these powered speakers is to play audio from your television, I would look at one of the other options on this list that has full HDMI ARC control. 
You can obviously connect your television via optical to these speakers, but it will require you to use the JBL remote control or speaker itself to change volume. Not a big deal to most, but just be aware. These come in both black and walnut finishes. At the time of this video, the JBL 4305Ps go for $2,200 and the 4329Ps go for $4,500. Be sure to check out our full review linked in the description if you're interested in either of these. Finally, and by far the most expensive powered speaker on this list is the KEF LS60s. Before I get into anything else, I just need to point out how different these look from all the other speakers on the list. The Klipsch's and the JBL's look like powerful horn-based monitor speakers. Klipsch fans will naturally gravitate to those and JBL fans will love the look of the JBL's. But the KEF's are a very modern looking speaker that could win awards just for their sleek design. Kef designed these starting with the constraint of making them incredibly narrow and only 5.1 inches wide and to look great in a modern home or loft. To pull this off, they designed them with two five and a quarter inch Unicore force canceling drivers on each side of each speaker, meaning four five and a quarter inch drivers on each speaker. Unlike most traditional speakers, which have separate tweeters in mid-ranges, KEF uses their patented UniQ design, which creates one point source for superb imaging. The UniQ driver houses a three-quarters inch aluminum dome tweeter in the middle of a four-inch aluminum cone mid-range driver. I could go on for hours talking about the technology inside of these drivers, but suffice it to say, they spared no expense leveraging all of the R&D from their famous over $30,000 Blade One Meta speakers. Like the JBLs, each of these speakers plugs into the wall and has their own amplifiers in their respective speakers. The LS60 wireless also has power in abundance with highly optimized mixture of custom class AB and class D amplification delivering a combined massive 1,400 watts of audiophile grade power with amplifiers dedicated to high, medium, and low frequencies within each speaker. Like the JBLs, if you connect the speakers wirelessly, you achieve 24-bit 96K and step up to 24-bit 192K when you connect the speakers with the included Ethernet cable. In terms of connections, these speakers have everything you would want except maybe a built-in phono input. However, if you're stepping up to these speakers, you would want a dedicated phono stage for your turntable anyways. These speakers have Bluetooth, Toslink optical, digital coax, and analog RCA inputs. In addition, they have a full HDMI ARC connection. I was so impressed with these speakers that I bought a pair for myself that I now use in my master bedroom. I connected to my OLED television with both HDMI and optical to test the differences. My bed is slightly offset from the television such that the television is not centered on the bed. This brings up a killer feature of these speakers. They come with the KEF Connect app, which gives you every capability you would want as either a novice or expert to set them up and modify them for your room. For instance, I set a profile that turns up the right speaker slightly since it is farther away from the bed. This centers the sound from the television. I have a massage chair on the other side of the television and thus set a second profile for that chair, which increases the gain on the left speaker, putting the perceived sound again right in the center of the television between the speakers. Usually when I'm in that chair, I want to totally detox from the day and just enjoy music. The Kefs have both AirPlay 2 and Chromecast, so I can stream lossless music from my phone. Not only that, the LS60s like the JBLs are Rune ready, so I can play ultra high res music to them right from the chair. Like the other speakers on this list, you can set either speaker to be the primary and you can plug in a subwoofer which automatically engages the internal crossover. Whereas the Klipsch's cross over at 60 hertz and the JBL's at 80 hertz, as you would expect from these more expensive LS60s, if you are really into this like I am, you can change both the crossover level and the slope if you want. Or you can let the KEF app do it for you based on what it thinks is right. I've got a large bedroom, so I put in a KEF KF92 subwoofer, which frankly is overkill as these two speakers have incredible bass output and have 3BD down at 31 hertz. But I live and breathe this stuff and by adding the sub can get subsonic bass down to 11 hertz and set my own crossovers to nail the sound in my room.
At the time of this video, the LS60s are $6,999, which is not cheap, but these are truly incredible speakers. If you love the LS60s, but they are totally out of your price range, and the JBLs or Klipsch's don't have the right look or functionality you're looking for, Kef also offers a bookshelf version of these speakers, the LS50 Wireless 2s, which are currently $2,799. I've played with all of these speakers in my own home and I've learned the ins and outs of each. If you are not sure which is the right speaker for you, please stop by one of our award-winning showrooms or call or chat with our team at audiovice.com. Our team loves to help people find the exact right solution for your situation and setup. Or go to our detailed review on each speaker or our full article at audiovice.com that includes the entire comparison chart of inputs, wattage, driver sizes, and everything else of all the best powered speakers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe. Then if you click notify, you'll get the latest audio and home theater content as we roll it out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.